this internal scale system. On one side I've got love, and then on the other side I've got fear. Right? And what, what we finish up doing in our life is we finish up going, okay, I do want to love, but I don't want to love as much as my fear might get triggered. So I want to love, but I don't want to love that much that all of my fears are going to have to be given up. That's our problem as a society. It's also our problem individually. You look at how much individually we are having trouble with actually putting into action the principles of divine truth. Why are we having that trouble? The main reason why we're having the trouble is because fear is still the dominant emotion in our life. It's not so much that we have fear. The fear having fear is not the problem. Can you see that? The problem is that we live in it, in the fear. The problem is that we honour it. The problem is that we value it. That's the problem we have. Right? This causes us, these emotions, this, this honouring the value or living in fear, causes us to act highly unethically. We have no ethics as a result of our fear. Because if you think about it, if we had some ethics and no fear, it would be so simple to be ethical, wouldn't it? We'd be able to just do it every day automatically. We wouldn't even worry, would we? We wouldn't go. We wouldn't be worried about. Oh, but what about the money? Or what about this? Or what about that? Or what about how this looks? Or any of these other things? Because we would be so focused on the fact that there is no fear, so we'd only be focused on the love part of the equation. That's all we'd be focused on. So life is a lot more simple like that, as you can imagine. See, at the moment inside of us, it's really I, I see this happening quite a lot inside of each person. Inside of us, we have this measuring system, just like the scales here. We have this measuring system that's going on constantly. We measure every possible action in our life as to whether it's going to create more fear in our life or not. That's the measuring system we use. Can you see that? And, and if we believe it's going to create a more difficult life, and we only have to believe it, it doesn't even have to be true. Uh, we only have to believe it. If we believe it, we now then take those actions and we do whatever the fear dictates. It doesn't even have to be true. We do it. That's our problem. And, and because we do that and we've got this internal scale going, fear, no fear, fear, no fear, fear, no fear, fear, no fear, then of course we respond in addictions, which is also unethical. <laughs> right? We respond in addictions because we are so driven by our fear. So if you had to ask the question, what causes unethical behaviour? It's not your fear that causes unethical behaviour. It's your valuing fear that causes unethical behaviour. It's honouring fear that causes your unethical behaviour. It's not the fear itself. So... Many people I see using fear as an excuse. It's not fear that's the problem. It's your unwillingness to see that fear has no value that is the problem. It's your unwillingness to see that you're honouring fear. That's the problem. That's what causes all of your unethical behaviour. Every single time you honour fear, you are placing fear as your God... Uh, and the world is doing this. You know, a lot of people say uh, the God of the world is money or the God of the world is whatever. No, the God of the world currently is fear. That's the God of the world. Because that's the thing that every single person on the planet generally responds to first. That's the thing, fear. They value it, they honour it, and because they value it and honour it, they live in it. Right? And the result of this fear is that it is the cause of all unethical behaviour on the planet. All unethical behaviour on the planet is, uh, is caused by fear. So can you see that it's so important for us to stop honouring our fear 
and start honouring love. And this is what this statement does. This golden rule that I gave to people in the first century, that is what it does. It honours love over fear. Because it's, uh, it says, in treating others how I would like them to treat me, not how they treat me, but how I'd like them to treat me, I am now honouring love over any fear-based situation that can occur. So what if, what if they want to kill me? How will I act towards them? Well, I don't want to kill them. And I don't want to be killed. So I would act in harmony with that. Does that make sense? That's how I would act. If, if, what if they wanted to destroy my life? How would I act towards them? Well, I don't want my life destroyed. So how could I consider destroying their life in return? I can't. Right? What if they wanted to torture me? How would I act? Well, I, I don't want to be tortured. So how could I ever consider torturing them? What if they wanted to shoot me? How would I act? Well, I don't want to be shot. So I can't, certainly can't consider shooting them in return. What if, what if they want to rape my wife? Right? How would I act? Well, I don't want my wife to be raped. Right? So I would not ever consider raping their wife or child in return. Can you see? It's like every single violent action that can be taken against me, if I do this, if I understand this principle, I could never take the action in return. What if I'm in a religion and they want to excommunicate me from the religion? Well, I don't want to be excommunicated. So why would I ever excommunicate another person? I don't want to be damned for the rest of my life, so why would I damn another person for the rest of theirs? I don't want to be criticised and judged constantly by other people, so why would I want to criticise and judge anybody myself? Can you see, it? Just you can go from the most extreme action a person can consider to the least extreme action that we, va that we consider. And if I'm, if I'm applying this principle, I'm going to pretty much be loving in every situation because I'm going by what I would like to be done to myself. Right? And, and instead of to do that, I'm going to have to confront all of these fears that I have about doing that. Aren't I? So I'm going to have to have some courage. Courage is a very important quality to develop. And if I address these fears and I stop honouring and valuing my fear over all other things, I stop making fear my God. So that's no longer my God. And even if I don't believe in God, if I make love my God, I'm going to be better off. Can you see? I don't even have to believe in God. I can make love my God instead. And the, I am capable of changing my life. And then if you start actually accepting God and going through the process of all of those things and receiving divine love, it's easier then to love. And therefore I become more like God and more like love anyway. But I, I don't even have to do that if I really want to change. All I've got to do is stop honouring my fear as God.